What's up, everybody? It's Boy Simon Simon TCG, and today I guys want to talk to you guys about um, the last draft pick I went to. I finally got my top eight, and limited that has been alluring me for so long. Um, I have a couple ninth place finishes, um, so not obviously getting over the hump of getting the top eight. Finally got it, and I'm going to show you all three of the decks that I drafted. Unfortunately, I fell to my teammate in top eight uh, in the quarterfinals. He actually went on to. Uh, get there at the end of the event. He opened up his gold foil, and it was a um a gallantry gold, which is hilarious because he doesn't play Bolton, but you know who does play Bolton? <laughs> yeah, this guy. <laughs> so I'll talk to you guys about all of the decks I got. Um, I won't show you everything I exactly drafted, um, because that would be long, and I don't remember order. Like this is actually an prop two video. Um, I'm actually live streaming currently while I'm also doing this, but I really thought it'd be good to also make a video talking about this because I think, hey, be good for the channel, right? So in the first round, um, I sit down and I tell everyone, and people who've drafted with me know, I'm very honest. Um, out of all the IRL drafts that I've done, I've actually only drafted Florian. I've never drafted not Florian, and partially it's because I do have a preference towards Florian, right? But if if you've seen some of the decks I've had, it makes sense. Like, for example, I actively wanted to play Florian this draft. And then if you look at my deck, you cannot tell me that I should have not played Florian once you see this deck, right? So I'm actively wanting to play Florian. I'm in a seat where it kind of makes sense. Uh, my pack one, pick one, obviously I'll get to breaking down the deck. But I do remember my pack one, foil red, cadaver's chilling. So obviously I kind of want to be on Earth. Second pack was the Red Root Bound. I'm like, okay, clearly Earth, nothing else but Earth. Then I start to get some Earth cards, like the Earth Form. I think Earth Form was my pack three. So I'm still not 100% committed to having to do anything. Um, I get, um, where is it? Where is it at? Where is it at? Uh, Snuff Out um, was, I think, pack two pick one. Um, but there's a lot of signs, like, barely else supposed to be in at least Dream Blade. Um, I was thinking about possibly doing the Runeblade Heavy, uh, Aurora build, or even the Runeblade Vis, uh, I call it Viscerai Florian. Um, but the fact that I got so much Earth early, and then the supporting pieces around it, I was 100% supposed to be in the Florian seat. And it feels like it happens too often <laughs> that I'm in the Florian seat, but I mean, I'm not going to complain. So, to kind of break down the deck, the idea of the deck, especially early, decompose fast, have benefits to decomposing. So, what needs to happen... To decompose fast. Obviously, you need a lot of decompose cards. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine cards that decompose. That's fantastic. That's higher than most decks have. Secondly, what do we have next? We need earth cards. You actually need earth cards to be able to decompose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. Twenty four earth cards. 24 fucking Earth cards, guys. That's insane. That's literally insane. So next, we need payoffs. Payoffs. The Fertile Grounds get bonus off of you having stuff in the uh, Banish Zone. These auras, when they destroy, make extra tokens. So that's what? 3, 6, 7? That's 10. That is 10 cards. Oh, I forgot. Technically, add one to everything. Because I have this fucking Arcane Seeds here. Like, add one... Like, like, look at the, the the value. If I was to just goldfish this deck, which we will do afterward, and you can see some of the play lines that happen, you can see this deck is just in, insane. I only had two pieces of equipment here. Um, you guys, and they're not really on screen. The camera's not great. I do apologize. I only had well grounded and helm. What else? What the fuck else did I need? Both of these cards to say, hey, fucking have four cards in your banish zone. I my deck was said, hey, that's pretty easy. Um, some people were very confused, like, during the draft, like, how my deck was so broken. And I will say the other Florians didn't draft well. One was on more of a run heavy build, one was on, like, a almost a pure healing build. Like, I had three foot of force. Like, I had, like, four to five. So, I think they tried to build cute decks. Um, I know there was a bunch of Blossom Decays that I passed. I could even have more. But, like, those cards were not necessary. Um, I, I think that was their biggest issue, is that they just did not understand, like, how to really draft Florian with that many Florians. I think if there's two Florians in a pod, I think you can just draft whatever the fuck you want, and you're probably fine. 
But when there's that many Florians, you have to understand what is right to take. I started taking Earth Heavy. I wanted to be Earth. So that's why I have so many Earth cards. I see you... I, I actually have very few extra Runeblade cards here. Now, I will say, when you are in a proper draft pod, normally your deck isn't supposed to suck. Like, if you're in a pod where everyone just knows what they're doing, you're going to get pick, You're gonna get decent picks later. Like, I'll show you in the Acelio deck some of the picks I got late, and you'll be like, what the fuck? Well, yeah, it makes sense. That's what's supposed to happen. People are supposed to draft their seat. And that's what happened. People drafted their seat, and my deck became broken. This is probably one of the best draft decks I've ever had. So let's kind of go card by card. Uh, one blue summer's fall, kind of pictured off here, pretty good, obviously. Uh, six cadavers tilling. Uh, obviously the pack one pick one was the red foil one. Uh, it's kind of hard to like pass that kind of card up. Uh, two rootbound carapace. Uh, very good, especially for getting super fast decomposes. If you can go block out turn one cadavers tilling, block out rootbound. And then just on your actual second turn, you're on turn online, and then you start playing auras out. Oh, the deck is the deck is insane. Um, so these are healing cards. Healing cards. We have two blue fruits of the forest, one yellow. Uh, these are great for attacking with your weapon. They pay for most of the stuff in your deck. They're easy cards that can get in the uh, graveyard because I go do is discard, and you don't have to do anything fancy. You just discard them. Uh, two blue and one yellow fertile ground. Um, so one of the reasons that I went for, um, a lot of healing is because the thing that I've been losing to the most is Florian is wizards, uh, which is not common before. I used to always beat the wizards, but these are the people like going really, really heavy on the arcane damage, not like doing much physical. And the thing that was happening was my deck had blocked fantastically on small hands, but I just kept getting burned to death. Um, and the games would either become way too close and I would lose, or they'd be close and I'd barely win. And I wanted to stop that, so I prioritized a bunch of healing cards. Again, outside of Fruits of the Forest, I think I got all of the Fertile Grounds that went around. There was no Reds. Um, I can tell you for a fact, unless um, they just saw him pack one picked one, it. I got the only Red Arcane player that I seen. I got the only Yellow, and I got a Brush Off. So when it comes to effective health in my deck, my deck has so much effective health. Guys, what I'm telling you again, this is one of the most broken decks I've ever seen. I'm telling you. So then we go down here. What is this pile supposed to do? This pile is my auras and my and my generators. It's three sigil of earth. What type of fucking CC deck tech am I doing? Three sigil of deadwood. What the fuck? Blue oath of the arc. All right. So, four rune chain generators, three embodiment of earth generators, no, but now let's look. I don't have things like Dirge in this deck that I usually would. So, I kind of, they're kind of a slow burn here, but that's completely fine. My deck, it can be very fast, but it also has the ability to be slow. But let's look at this. How effectively can I use these sigils of earth? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, that's it. I have, oh, sorry, nine. Uh, obviously, some of this stuff is sideboard. Um, and all that stuff. But I have, in theory, nine fucking non-attack actions. That's completely fine. Usually I only need one. I only need to have one attack action, like, every, like, turn and a half when I have these environments, and I'm, pick up, I'm completely fine. This is just, like, eight arcane right sitting right here. This is just eight arcane sitting right here. So then we go up, up here. Four earth form. Look at my blue count. Look at the blue count everywhere. I can throw this shit reliably. And because I'm decomposing so fast, these just fucking turn on and now I'm making two embodiments again. Again. And this shit attacks for seven. How many exchanges are going to go block six, send seven? Your opponent goes block six, not send seven. Who's going to win those exchanges turn over turn? While I'm also making arcane and I'm healing. Just the, the, the life exchange is, is just so unbalanced with this deck. Like, it is so hard to out-trade me. I literally felt like I was playing a CC constructed deck versus these people. This is probably the easiest 3 I've ever had in my fucking life. I, it was insane. Arcane Seeds Life. You need to explain to me how I got all of this and I got an Arcane Seeds Life. The other Florians did not, just... They just... I, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. 
So then we go, oh, hey, here's more. Yellow Autumn's Touch. It's a fucking block three. Who gives a shit what else it does? It's an Earth card. Who gives a shit? But if it does, it comes in for six. It comes in for six. And then down here, we have some utility cards. We have some utility cards. So realistically, what the sideboard looked like. Realistically, this is sideboard. Uh, These six cards. To kind of show you. And these cards come in. If something is absolutely not necessary. So let's say I'm in a, um, I'm in a room blade mirror. I would take out something like the f these th fertile ground. And I would add something like condemn to slaughter. Splittering deadwood. And maybe the ten foot tall. If it's like a Florian. If it's a fucking Aurora. It's probably the condemn. This and like a snuff out. Like it's even like even just like these like these cards right here. They're just all so broken man. It, it's insane. Like. It, it took me, like, I remember my deck being broken, but, like, looking at it, it's, it's even more broken. And I still got equipment. Dude, I got these two pack three. So, one other reason my deck is broken, I literally didn't pick any equipment in the first two packs. I got so fucking belled out that I was sitting next to a lightning, two lightning people. So, these got fucking passed. No one needed them. And I got to have the best head I could have, pause, and the best legs I could have. It literally cannot get better than this and this is what happens when you read your seat and, and, and you know how and you understand how the thing is flowing like real life should i've had this broken of a deck no but recognizing hey there's these good cards here there's these good cards here what's the synergies i need because again i passed blossom in the k if i really wanted just to fucking have the most consistent decompose i could have picked that but, you know, no, I was like, no, I'm going to pick other things to help my deck. I think I have this fulfilled. And, again, the decomposed cards that I did choose are the best ones I could have. I have two defensive ones, and I have the best offensive ones, and I even have one blue summer's fall. It's still, pick, like, can I move this over a little bit? Yeah, that, there it is. That's better. Like, and, then again, this is what happens when you read your seat. This deck is so beyond broken, it's unbelievable. So... Obviously, I threw that pod. So, round one, I'm facing a Verdict. Um, it, the game got kind of close. Um, I think... I, I think, realistically, as broken as this deck was, they were on a very wizard version. I got very, very belled out by putting having the double arcane player just when I did. Because I actually double arcane player in one turn. They won a turn when they went um, a staff trailblazing aether. And then they went um, Aether Quicken. Uh, so that's they sent eight at me. I realistically, I think I was ah oh, fuck. I, I threw away the fucking paper. I think I was at like six at the time. And even if I have only one healing card, so let's say I only have this, I'm at I'm at six. They're gonna hit me for fucking um four. Okay, I'm at two. Now they're at me for four. If I just heal two. And I go to four. I'm still, I'm, I'm still dead. I'm still dead. But being able to get two over. So now I'm at six. Now I'm at nine. They just use their last burst turn. They no, no longer, no longer can do it. Now they're just zapping me to death because I am coming at offense because they're super fucking low. They're trying to stay alive while doing this. They took a lot of damage to do that, and I just fucking arb came polarity them twice. And it's got dumpstered. After that. Uh, round two. I face the Florian Mirror. Um, all I'm going to say is. Uh, Arcane Seeds make four rune chance. Ten foot tall you for four and ten. Good game. <laughs> oh dude it was, it was insane. It was insane. Uh, the last round uh, was against an Asilio. This was probably one of the scarier games I've had. So what happened was the steel the steel was started very aggressive early, and I was actually kind of behind on tempo. Um, I was and I was also blocking a lot. I was like, oh, maybe I can just outlast them. Maybe I can outlast them. But they were starting to pepper me, and I was getting my healing effects in there here and there. But it's like I am so close to actually not being able to just do it because you know I'm having to lose two cards in my hand to do this, 
and I'm only gaining like two fucking life. They hit me for three. They're constantly getting over, and they're going like lightning card, lightning card, wizard card, and I'm like, they're 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 dealing, they're sending five, and all that stuff. And I had to like activate my sanctuary at a really unfortunate time because my hand was like all blues, and I was like, there's no, I don't have any offense. It's just two. So in a very inopportune turn, I. I actually think I almost threw the game. I, like, pitched all of my blues just to, like, cycle them out. I should have just kept one and swung sword. I did nothing. Thankfully, I didn't get majorly punished because they, like, activated Cilio. They were, like, ugh. They go activate Cilio on their, on their turn again. And then, like, the, they sent, like, three on my turn. I got super bad that they didn't have a good turn. Because if they have a very positive turn cycle there, I actually would lose that game. That's because of how much room I gave them. Now, I did end up fatiguing them. But, again, it's because... I was able to put enough pressure on because I ended up finding the right stuff at the right time. And I didn't get super punished for my mistakes. But that game was way too close. I actually think they had a really good Acilio deck too. It's actually one of the reasons I played Acilio in the second uh, pod. One, because I wasn't in the Florian seat. I was just in the Acilio seat. But I kind of I, I liked how their deck composition was. Because like, I've played like Acilio in draft. Um, like on Runaways. But I always was like, you know, I just need some more physical attacks. I need more physical attacks. I don't play the pure wizard version of a silly lot, or even versions for that matter. I know they exist. Um, the issues I've always had with them is you're not very fast. But um, that silly list was able to be fast and still send the taller arcane. So um, I definitely learned something. So let's wrap this one up. Like, this is probably a deck that I'm probably going to keep together. And I just. It, it, this uh, this deck is so special to me because like I feel like this is the the deck that's rewarded me the most for like understanding like my seat and just be, re being rewarded because like I've never just I, I was so confused guys I was just so confused about it um let's see here all right. So that was my first draft. I'm at 3-0. So my next one is Acilio. And I'll be completely honest with you guys. Um, I got fucking lucky. So I actually won two this draft. Um, I got very, very lucky in my last game where I had to make a 50-50 call. If I'm wrong, I just lose the game. Oh, actually, hold on. You guys probably want to see some. Uh, I, I told you guys I'd, show, I'd do some test hands. With that, so let's do some test stands real quick. With that draft uh, deck, and you guys can just see how broken it is. Obviously, like you know, these are, you know, uh, how do I, how do, how do, how do people do this? Yeah, like there's no, is there, is there M's in here? Uh, the snuff outs in here. I, I think I shuffled them in my sideboard, but like I don't really give a shit, bro. Let's uh. How was, how the heck was Arcane Seeds Live past you? I would have hated to draft that for sure. Um, I mean, I I think there's only very specific times you hate draft. I don't actually don't hate draft often. I would rather just make my deck the most independently strong deck I can make it. Um, Jacob, like yeah, absolutely. If it makes the most sense to hate draft, because there's nothing like insane in the pack. But like, let's say you're a lightning hero and you're a deck that actually actively needs lightning cards to function. Why would you say, oh, I'm not going to let this Florian, who I didn't know had this super busted deck, because I, I believe it was in pack two, I got it. Um, They wouldn't know how busted my deck is. They're not going to be like, oh, I'm just going to take this uh, Arcane Seed Life in case that th they're a Florian, which, I mean, you would probably know I'm a Florian um, rather than a Verdance, because I think there's a Verdance next to them, so like uh, they, they probably know. But like, oh, in case this is a Florian, I'm going to take this Arcane Seed's Life that I physically can't play. Like, that's just stupid. Uh, now, the, again, the very, very highest level, if you don't think your deck is good enough to beat them in the 3-0 or the 1-1 or the 1-0, and you really think you need the edge to get to the 2-1 or the 3-0, you can take it. But like, I don't think that's a common thing that's happening. Alright, so I think we got a decent amount of shuffles in. So let's say we're going first. Uh, Yellow Autumn's Touch, Sigil of Deadwood, Sigil of Deadwood, 10 foot tall. Oh, uh, this hand's actually really fucking good. Um, this hand does underpitch, so it is slightly unfortunate. Because you don't want this to play this 10 foot tall early. Um, unless it's just the most open thing ever. So you're going to play two Sigil of Deadwoods. 
And you can act. You can either a not do anything, or you can underpitch to Rotwood Reaper. I'm actually going to underpitch a Rotwood Reaper for four. And I will stack this ten foot tall to the top of the stack. So we swing for four. Whatever next turn comes, we have Condemned to Slaughter, Cadaver Stealing, Earth Form, Brush Off. Fantastic. So they're going to attack me for like three, right? Brush Off. And then they're going to do something. I'll probably take the damage. Arsenal's Condemned to Slaughter. Then on my turn, both of these will crack. I'll make two Rune Chant, and then you just go Earth Form. Um, and now you just sent nine at them. So you what? Well, how much did we block? We blocked. Oh, I already brushed off. Sure. Uh, so that's twelve with an arsenal, and this is plus three. So this is in theory, if we get to play this, it's fifteen. And depending on if that hit, we got the embodiment. Let's just imagine we got the embodiment, right? Well, that works off an embodiment. Uh, yeah, we got a card that works off the embodiment. So this is actually a pretty neat hand. Um, I actually would like to decompose with this hand, so this is kind of hand where I can kind of do two things. I can, I'm, and I'm probably playing a two card hand, no matter what. So this is probably like a block here for six. And then decompose with Summer's Fall. Get rid of these three. Run for four. Now, the only issue is I didn't get a ton of Earth early, so we don't get to decompose Giga Fast unless we... Ah, we didn't get it. Sorry, I forgot to do this face up. So, Fruits, uh, Earth Form, Sigil of Earth, Snuff Out. Or let me put it up here, because you guys can see it better right here. Wait, why is it so fuzzy? I don't know, but yeah, it's these cards. So, um... God, that camera quality sucks. Ah, uh, but here, this is another thing. You can do multiple things. Uh, you can choose to play two card hands with, with uh, like, one of these. Keep one of these. Keep two card hands. You can keep, you choose to keep a third card and discard this or play this, swing one of these. Alternatively, you can choose to block out and do one of these two. Like, like th these hands do so many things. But let's just put all of it in there. It doesn't really fucking matter. Let's just say we blocked out for some reason. Sigil Deadwood. Oath the Arcanite. God, I didn't shuffle. Oh, Cadaver's Tilling. Rootbound. Perfect. So here we would just Rootbound. Get rid. We're online. So now my turn. Sigil Deadwood. Tilling. Uh, let's get rid of this. Coming in for eight. Awesome. I got to block and then send eight, which is broken. So then we draw our next hand, red root bound, tilling, polarity, amazing. So this, you can do it kind of again, you can kind of do whatever you want. Let's just say we want to play the root bound, but not do anything with it. They send arcane at us, we're going to heal four. We break this, we make two, we throw earth form for six, I want to hit make two embodiments. And that's just like our deck probably low rolling realistically, and that's like, Still really good turn cycles. Those are still really good turn cycles. Oh, or am I telling yeah, all my all my decomposed cards are just clumped up right here. So yeah, that uh that lets three owed. So next we go to Acilio. Um I was a one of one Acilio on this one. Again, I went in as a one of the two three O's. Was it was it two or three three O's? I was one of the three O's that existed. And I was in the Acilio seat. Again, I was... I kind of went into the draft wanting to, like, not play Florian. But, you know, I'm a Florian merchant. What do you want me to do? Um... Let's separate this. So, I will say, I think the deck is fine. I think the deck is too one-able. I do not believe this deck can 3-0. And I will show you why. Um... So, let's separate this into Wizard and Lightning. And like I said, you guys will wait. What is it? This is this is meld, right? Or is this just lightning? Yeah, it's wizard lightning. Whatever, let's put it over there. So I kind of like part of this deck was a meme. I'll be completely honest with you. Um, I got the idea for some the like some of the way this deck flowed off of Roger Brody. Uh, so he won one of the draft. Uh, the draft PQ I went to the previous day. 
So the the Saturday he won that with uh Asilio. And I looked in his I look at his deck and his deck was very fucking interesting. Uh, it's in cards. I've, I mean, I've seen that style of uh, Cilio before, like some of the card choices that he had. But I was like, it, it never really seemed to work. I've always seen the, those people go like, they can only max out at 2-1. They rarely ever 3 0 would and a lot of times they were a 1-2 deck. But I was like, okay, he won, so there has to be something there. Because there was a lot of good people in that top 8. So to kind of spread this out, uh, first thing I want to talk about is these three save it for thoughts so this is a card i've literally never registered unless i physically had to but i know roger played three and obviously the ideal is you shuffle three things so like in this deck you know you have this that you can we can shuffle back that needs to go in that pile we can get these back we can get our exploding aethers back and all that stuff so, like, there are obviously, like, really cool things you can do. Like, this is actually just a good thing to shuffle back, as long as you have, like, mana in your deck. Because this literally goes, um, like, let's say you have a blue. And it's saying you go, pitch a blue, exploding aether, one floating, trailblazing aether, it's going to probably surge, aether quicken. And that's just, what, four, that's seven. Now, it's a four card seven, you might say, that's not good. Well, you have to remember, this is a format with no arcane barrier. Someone could just die. Right? Someone could literally just die. Now, obviously, like, if you had that exact hand, you'd probably block with this, realistically, and go exploding Aether, Aether Quicken. Uh, and you do, uh, six damage. You do one less damage this way. Right, wait, hold on. Is that true? Hold on. This is four. Oh, this is a red one, so it's five plus four. Nine. Oh, it's nine the first time. I'm super slow. I was, I was like, hold on, that was that math. That math does not check out. Uh, so yeah, four card nine. Actually, that's actually really fucking good. Actually, if they've already broke the sanctuary, they usually just die if they don't have like fingers and stuff. Um. But yeah, the, so the save the thoughts were interesting to be able to recycle powerful wizard cards. Uh, they could technically get a lightning card if it was absolutely necessary, but uh. You know, I don't have. I only have flashes. This, which flash and trailblazing and things like trailblazing, I think are very good. I will say that. So let's look at the, just the regular wizard cards. Um, we have a lot of trailblazing aethers. This is a card I got fucking pilled on because every time someone played this against me, it always was just so good because I couldn't stop it, and they could just like not block me, and they just went super fucking wide, and it was like super cringe. Yeah, I have six Trailblazing Aether. I definitely think this is overkill. I think the reds were fine. Maybe one of the yellows is fine, but I don't think I should have ran six. I think that's slightly where I went wrong because, like, even if I go again, these aren't really impressive. Like, I'd rather just throw this than need to, like, play cards, pump, and then do this. Uh, as far as t uh, other Cheerio cards, um, we had Arcane Twinnings, uh, Etchings, Oh I, had, oh, I even had blue of these. What the fuck? Yeah, so these were all the zero cost cards. So what this deck could do. What this deck could do. Is it could block if it would like to. Because it's actually blocked decently well. And I would just throw a zap at them. Pretty much. And it would almost always leak. Uh, so that was very good. Oh, here's another etchings. So then we go to... Oh, god, another etchings. So then we have a few of our taller spells. With here, here, here. And then we have three exploding aether. So, like, th this isn't all bad. Uh, then we have a sigil of forethought. It's not all bad. It, it definitely could have been better. It should have been better. I do think that I read my seat correctly. But the thing I did not do correctly was a uh, build. I think my build could have been a little bit better. I think this is like a 5 out of 10. Like, could this, again, this could this like 2-1 probably, but like, should it? Not really. I only had Twinkle Toes too. Like, I got really greedy. I, I, I think I was a little cocky from my first draft. And I was like, I don't really need equipment. When I know for a fact I need equipment. Um, I, I just, I got too big-headed. So, going on to the lightning cards... 
Uh, my go again attacks are just that. Just these four. Two of them are conditional, and these cards suck. Now, because you have balls there, they get slightly better, but I, I don't like to assume that a card will get value because I'm playing balls there. We go into our other... Oh, sorry, that's not zero cost. This card. We go to our other zero cost attacks, and that's it. It's a flaring charge. And, like, I had to p take this late. I took this card, flaring charge, super late. And I had to, like, start picking kind of bad cards or cards I didn't really want. Um... Like, I think I had to pick that. Oh, uh, oh, and was that it? That's where I picked more cards than that. Maybe that was the card I picked, and I just got really hung up on having to pick that, maybe. I'm I'm not sure. Um, So then we go to our one cost. And I got a bunch of Trip to Lightning Fantastics. I actually really enjoy this card if you're playing Lightning Hero. And a yellow Heaven's Claws, it's kind of just what it is. Um, we got a bunch of flashes. So, we're, like, the thing is, you can kind of see where the, like, where this deck is going. Like, or let me just finish this and then I'll explain. Uh, two Electric Shock Discharges and two Sigils. So, you can see the idea of this deck. You Cheerio some cards here, you have access to go again. So you can go Cheerio cards, play Flash, play Wizard Spell, play Wizard Spell. And that's not horrible. Like, you can do decent numbers that way. But the issues that I found was I was commonly drawing one side of this. I really would draw both. And when I drew both, it was okay. Uh, but usually when I drew both, I had to take a bunch of damage. Um, and I was not a big fan of that. Because the original way the deck was built was to be able to block... And send a decent zap. But if I do not block, I'm like dealing half of your life. And these don't do it. Well, yes, the fry, easy, three damage. Were they going to do block it? Probably. The flashes were cool. I think like this side of the deck, besides the all three yellow chosen my third, I think this is completely fine. I think this is, I, I, I would still do all this. Uh, even up here, I, I would still get all this. I think I would change some of the lightning cards I have. I would like much more go again. Or at least block three. Uh, maybe more pumps. Like more electric shot discharges. I just think there's a lot lacking on the this side. So, the way this uh, one went. Uh, game one, I'm against Florian. And I get absolutely fucking spat on. Like, it was the most unserious game, unclose game I've ever had in my fucking life. I don't remember how bad the beatdown was, but I remember it was fucking bad. Uh, number two, I'm going against an Avertance. And I'm like, oh, cool, another wizard, another Earth hero, great. And they just outlast all my damage. Oh, sorry, I had it backwards. It was a beatdown from Verdance. And then, I mean, I got beat down by the Florian in my background, too, too. So, like, it, it, does, it doesn't really change anything. Uh, these are absolute beatdowns. Nothing really to talk about. Just absolutely bad. Uh, round three, and this is when, like, I'm actually kind of worried. Because, well, I did start 3-0. So, if I was 3-3, I would be the highest seed of 3-3. But I've had some weird shit happen before. Literally, this PQ season... Even being like a high to seated X something. So I really actually, I got nervous and I really, and I really wanted to push for that win. So I'm facing against uh, the four inch, third earth hero. What the fuck? But it is what it is, right? The game is starting off really fucking good for me. And I'm actually starting to cheer up. I'm starting to go like, okay, I can do this. I'm like going flash, trollblazing aether, trollblazing aether, fucking flash, etching, trollblazing aether, Exploding Aether. Boo, boo. I'm like going crazy. I'm going stupid. But then my deck just stops working. And I'm drawing hands of like blue fluttering charge, sigil, exploding aether, open the floodgates. And I'm like, uh, my opponent's attacking for 10 and I'm at 12. I don't think I can keep my hand. So I'm having to start blocking. We get into this really weird grind game. Uh, Usually happens when I get a Cilio, and I'm not good at that part. 
of grinding with a cilio, even though the deck was originally made, at least on this side, to do that. It gets to the point where I'm presenting lethal. He has not shown me a healing card yet. And I'm like, I'm just worried. I was like, please don't see healing card. Please don't see healing card. He like thinks about his hand for a while. And I'm like, is he just like, we're looking at his hand. Just we'll be one of his cards changed. I think I got that. I think I got it. And he goes, pitch, play fertile ground. I'll gain life and I'll go back down to one. I'm like, fuck. And then he attacks me. I fall to one. So now it is now one to two in favor of him. He, yeah, but he doesn't have a sanctuary, and I'm like, okay, um, I don't have a hand. He gets to have a full hand back, and I draw no block, no block, two block, three block, and I my heart drops, because if he just attacks for six, I'm dead. In th cause, well, in theory, I could discard and draw, but I know most of my deck. Um, most of my deck is like these lightning cards, and like there's, there's some of these in there. But even if I draw the three block, um, he has a full hand. Like I'm probably just gonna lose my hunter hand, and not be able to do much anyway. So I'm assuming I'm pro I'm so favored to lose. But he looks at his hand for a long time, and he goes, play an aura. But it wasn't one that made uh, rune chant. It was uh. Fucking, um, what was it? It's the uh, Sigil of Earth. Attack for four. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I slam two cards down. And I go like, okay. On my turn, activate a Cilio. I draw a Zap. And I'm like, all right, man. One of our terminal lives ends right here, right now. Zap you for three. Do you have the healing card? And he's just looking. And he's like, kind of, sort of. And I'm like, I don't understand. What? Kind of, sort of. I was like, I kind of can heal. And I'm like, um... Okay. Now, to give you extra context, at my point after this, my deck is Exploding Aether, Trollblazing Aether, Electroshatic Discharge, mis uh, Random Card. I'm about to draw my last hand, um, unless I choose to IP myself, which I did. Um, I pitched in a way I IP'd myself. I kept a luck shot discharge so I could twinkle toes if he made rune chance and then can immediately attack with me, attack me. Um, he go, but he's like thinking and tanking for a long time. I'm like, what could he fucking have that's like weird? He goes, fertile ground. I'll gain two life, and I was like, oh yeah, you got it, man. But my heart like actually sunk. I was like super upset. He's like, ah, I just couldn't get the it, bon the bonus online. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I draw my hand. And the only card in my deck is Exploding Aether. Here's the issue. My deck has a Save the Thought. Sorry, my hand has a Save the Thought, a Trollblazing Aether, and a Luxa Discharge. Now, and I, and I might be forgetting some stuff. So the scenario I'm about to tell you. Well, makes uh, is correct, but like what my hand might be might be slightly off. So I'm looking at my hand, and he's sending Letho at me. I have to block with my Trollblazing Aether, and I have to play the Discharge to activate Twinkle Toes. So my hand, um, uh, my hand um blocks five. So he's looking, he's thinking. And he like swings, um, what's it called? He swings six at me. With rune chant. He actually ended up making rune chants. So, I go, okay. I don't know how to get out of this. I do not know how to get out of this. So I actually think for a very, very long time. The issues I'm having is if the exploding aether was in my hand, I could just block, keep the trollblazing aether only, send lethal, and he's probably dead. The issue is, the line does not play around if he has healing in his next hand. So I would have to take a massive bet that the next hand that he has 
can to not heal. But that is so not guaranteed for me. So I'm tanking. And the, there's two lines I keep thinking about. Discarding to Asilio. Discarding to save the thought to Asilio. Draw the Exploding Aether. I block. And I sell Trollblazing Aether at him. Or. I block. Keep the save the thought. Um, block out. Play save the thought on my turn. Shuffle three three blocks, all being trollblazing aether, back into my deck. As long as he doesn't swing for seven, and he doesn't have healing again, I win. But that was like those are my only outs. Those are my only outs. And both of them require him not to have healing, but they get there different ways. And one's more risky than the other. So I'm thinking for a very, very long time. And I end up going with the line of, I'll discard to Cilio, get the Exploding Aether, block with the Exploding Aether in a card, and let's see what the fuck happens with uh, my Trailblazing Aether. So I'm like, okay, you have to have healing in this exact hand. And like, so the difference between the lines is he has one more turn to draw a healing card. So it's like, it's where it's like, when do I think he has a healing card? It's like, if I give him, if he has it this turn, I just lose. I was like, to be fair, I lose it at any point in time. So the decision actually wasn't as complicated as I was making it at the time. But this is just what's going through my head. So I go, all right, man. Trollblazing Aether. Did I get there? And he's singing for a long time and he's shaking his head. And I'm like, I'm starting to like, think I'm like, oh, we finally got there. And we got there. <sighs> that one was fucking intense. And he's like, not even disappointed. He's like, oh, thank you for the games. And I'm sitting there going like, fucking hell. I'm like, mentally fucking gone. That was probably one of the hardest games of Flesh and Blood I've ever played. Shout out to that guy. Um, I would do a quick test out of this. But we're getting to the 40 minute mark. And we still have our top 8 draft to go. And this is like one of my favorite decks. Um, probably about it's probably up there with the first draft I had actually, but this is actually my favorite style of flooring deck to to do. So uh, we get paired in the top eight. I already know I'm playing against my teammate. Um, I've taught him literally everything I know about draft, and he's been doing well these draft PQs as well. You know, so he and we and we're paired into each other. He oh sorry I had this common storm sorry. Um, he knows exactly what I'm going to play without a shadow of a doubt. There's no shot he doesn't know what I'm playing. I know what exactly he's playing. The issue is, the responsible for me thing to do is just draft my seat and not try to hope and pray for, uh, I can tech against him. Because, like, my deck still has a chance to win. It's just not favored to win. So, one of my favorite archetypes in draft... And as you can see, um, there's a lot of Broomblade cards here. So, Broomblade cards, Earth cards, no, generic cards. Now, there is other cards that I did draft. Um, I did draft five decomposed cards. I drafted a Red Tilling, a... Yellow, Summer's Fall, Blue, Summer's Fall, and like two other cards. So, I actually had the ability to decompose, but I didn't have a ton of Earth. So, the issue is, I would have to perfectly block with two Earth cards, see a decompose card immediately, decompose it before I see another Earth card, or I'd have to like IP myself. Then I'll have to block with one Earth card, and I can decompose again. I have to, it's Xaxes. I can, I can, I can decompose Xaxes. But again, that's a lot of exact, uh, perfect things that need to happen. And I just was not confident in that. So I actually ended up siding all of them out and just not playing them. Uh, the CYBs were hedged, so I was actually originally going to try to play CYB Florian. Um, I got a few of the Usual Bleed cards early, and I was like, yeah, I'll just grab the CYBs. It's like fine. And I also got things like the auto, like the Autumn Touch and the Earth. Um, so that, but I'll show you guys the uh, main deck. Watch you.
obviously. Uh, but let me get into this deck. I'll kind of fly through it. I mean, I don't know how far much I'll fly through it. But we'll get to playing some more games. I know um, people enjoy the games. But when I show you guys this deck, like, I think this deck is slightly worse than my Swiss deck. But, like, this kind of deck is so fucking fun to play, man. It's so fucking fun to play. The thing is, I've had even more broken versions of this deck before. Um, the issue is, it gets countered by exactly one deck, and it's exactly the deck that my teammate played. <laughs> so, this is the only thing you need to know. Like, everything else in the deck doesn't fucking matter. This is all you need to know. So, we have Runeblade Incantation as an aura. Two Cussings as an aura. Uh, where's it at? Uh, two, d uh, Deadwood Dirges. Again, just think about how broken this setup is just right now. I've had better. I've had five Dirges before. Three red, two yellow, and, oh, baby. Um, it's in <laughs> three Root Ranger Swarm, red. <laughs> it's in a red vantage point. So then you're like, oh, okay, Siphon, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But what if... I just showed you two more Deadwood Dirges. Uh, an O to the Arcanite. A Condemned to Slaughter. A, a Hocus Pocus Meet and Greet. And Arcane Spike. So, these create Rune Chants, or destroy Rune Chants. This attacks for a lot. And this is just good damage. This is just a 6, because I'm going to have Rune Chants all the time. So then we're like, oh, okay, Siphon, that's pretty good. But what's your blue base? Your blue base can't be that good. Oh, really? It can't? It can't be that good? Okay, random person that didn't say that. Four, mind you, this isn't in top eight, by the way. Four Sigil of Deadwoods. <laughs> Oath to the Arcanite. Um, Sigil of Arcanite. Blue Cussing. Two blue Deadwood Dirges. We have seven Deadwood Dirges, ladies and gentlemen. Two blue Rage Worm and Condemned to Slaughter. Half of this shit is just a CC deck. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I'm, I'm missing cards. There's other cards here, but like that's the only card you need to worry about. Look at this CC. Look at half of the CC deck I have right here. Yeah, this deck was insane. This deck was absolutely fucking insane. My only piece of equipment was this fucking Brotus. Because I just... Because I kept seeing these cards. I was like, I gotta fucking draft them. <laughs> but no, this deck is... This deck was insane. Like, this did some broken ass shit. The issue is the only thing that this deck loses to commonly... Is a hybrid... Mostly healing focused Florian. And if you cannot damage stack them. So normally if someone's in a life gain version. That's what like the cussings for. You don't play the cussings to death them immediately. You usually play cussings when you can dirge them. or And you also usually pitch them early. And try to play them second cycle. Because that original flooring won't put a ton of pressure on you. Uh, You can play the sigils out. Just so you can at least be doing something right. But yeah this deck is absolutely fucking broken. Uh, but unfortunately, I played my teammate in top 8. He played the Florian deck that I did not want to see. And he absolutely creamed me. Um, not with Pi, though. Um, unfortunately, there was only one game that happened, so I can't tell you a ton. And mostly, you guys have to see the deck. I actually still have it sleeved. Because I was like, because I was originally just going to show you guys this deck and keep that sleeved. But then I was like, yeah, I'll just go through all of them. So, that was like a fucking, dude, I'm fucking fast. Right there. I'm playing I'm fucking fast, baby. Alright, so and I got obviously I can show you guys I got Verdance. Uh out of all the ones, it's probably the one I wanted. I mean, even though I have a custom Verdance coming out soon, so this is what it is. So I got the top eight um that I was just wanting because I feel like I deserved at least to get a top eight with how much I've studied the draft format. So we got that. So um I'm gonna get back to my live stream. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you watch, if you like this, like, make sure you guys like, and subscribe, comment down below what you guys want to see next. It's been your boy Seven Seven TCG. I'm going back to tat. Peace.